Thank you so much for attending this session, keeping your sense of wonder using you as inspiration, and thank you Adobe Max for having me. I'm Shauna Lynn Pancheson, and I'm a hand lettering artist and illustrator in Chicago. This session will focus on using your inner child and things that make you happy to drive the direction of your work. Hopefully by the end of this presentation, you'll be inspired to create something fun using Adobe Fresco. So to start, just a little bit about me. If you don't know who I am, I'm known for my whimsical lettering and I'm currently exploring what my work would look like in the context of children's books. I have been drawing for as long as I can remember and have been professionally illustrating for the past eight years. My first mural was on my parents' wall when I was three and my mom says her best mom move was to ask me to tell her about the drawing instead of yelling at me. <laughs> Growing up, I always wanted to be an illustrator, though I took a small detour to pursue an opera performance degree, which lasted one semester before switching to graphic design. From there, I earned a Bachelor of Fine Arts in graphic design and a minor in painting, drawing, and printmaking, though I mostly did printmaking. Once I graduated, I worked at an internship for six months at Burnett Garcia in Jacksonville, Florida, where I really found my love of lettering and it was highly encouraged. And then in the field for the agencies for about two years, at which point um, I was fired from my job and jumped into full-time freelance illustration and adopted my rescue pup, Teddy Bear. I've spent the better part of these past eight years working to really hone my skills and push my style to something I'm incredibly proud of and am excited to share with you today. And also look at this bub. He's such a photogenic little guy and I make it a point to include a photo of him in every talk I give. So here he is. This is his glamour shot from a few years ago when I traded photos of him for pet portraits that I drew. I think it's a fair, it was a good trade. He looks really good. He's a cute boy. I love him so much. So the biggest thing that I've, I've found and I've learned when creating is that if I'm not happy, it's not the right direction. And if I'm happy or if I'm not happy, that's going to influence how the work is finished and it influences the outcome of the work. Um, and creating things that, that don't make you happy turn into tedious works and they cause you to expend more energy than they're worth. So to figure out what is the best fit for me, I created a skill for myself to help guide the kind of work I do, as well as the type of work I take on. So I asked myself, would it make five-year-old me happy? Then do it. Would it make 13-year-old me think I'm the coolest adult ever? Then definitely do it. Those are the two main questions I ask myself for every project I take on and every piece I create. I think back to when I was a kid and I was incredibly fortunate to have art as something that was always a part of my life and parents that really fostered my love of art, um, whether it was just sitting around and drawing, which I still do and it makes me very happy to do. It's my stress relief. Um, or taking various art classes over the summers as a kid. I took pottery, I took um, photo, I took drawing, and um, it, it really helped me sort of find what I enjoyed doing and influenced what I do now. When I was in eighth grade, I was introduced to Photoshop and Illustrator, and I learned how to draw on the computer with a mouse before I got a Wacom into his tablet. And I found that work a few years ago, and I'm honestly kind of impressed that I did it with a mouse because I would not be able to do that today. <laughs> so I'm, I've used Photoshop for my work for over 15 years now. And more recently, I invested in an iPad Pro, and I often use Adobe Fresco for my on-the-go work. It's a fantastic program, and it makes illustrating so very easy for me, especially because I can use my own brushes in the program. Um, I've, I've loved to make my own brushes for years and I make them for Photoshop and the fact that I can import them into Fresco and they work is very, very advantageous to my own work. And it makes it very easy for me to go back and forth between the two programs. And it's also allowed me to make changes to my client work while traveling pre COVID. 
uh, without having to bring my laptop with me, especially because having the laptop plus the iPad, it can make my backpack very heavy. And I like traveling with just the iPad if I can help it. I also think how cool five-year-old me would have thought um, an iPad and these programs would have been, and even how much college aged me would have loved the iPad Pro and Fresco over 10 years ago. So for this talk, I'm going to take you through my process of creating an illustration that makes me happy. And you're more than welcome to follow along with me and do one too, or you're welcome to just sit and watch. So we're going to start by listing all of the things that make us happy. There's no right or wrong to this because it's personal to you. And I think it's important to recognize all the things that we have loved that have shaped us into the creatives we are today. Whether that's movies or places, time or people, objects, toys, games, food, there are so many things you can utilize as inspiration. And as you're making your list, be sure to ask yourself, would this have made five-year-old me happy? And if it did, write it down. So for me, some of the things that make me really happy include cemeteries, folk music, coffee, my dog, um, autumn and flowers. The things that bring you joy don't necessarily have to be inherently happy things. They could be things that just give you good feelings, things that make you feel calm or things that energize you. These are the things I could expand on further as well. And I'd encourage you to do that too. Um, I could take things like cemeteries and expand into my love of history. I'm a huge fan of the podcast stuff you missed in history class. Um, or flowers and branch off with florals I love, such as peonies, tulips, especially black tulips, which if you didn't know those existed, I highly recommend you look them up because they are stunning. Um, and we were very lucky. We had, uh, I think they're called Van Gogh tulips, I believe. I believe they're Van Gogh tulips in our garden, um, but they were these black, beautiful tulips this past year. Um, I also love roses. Holly branches so much that I have it tattooed, a holly branch tattooed on me and winter berries. Um, so before you start off, take a few minutes to really dive deep and think about the things that made you happy as a kid, or even the things that make you happy now and write them down. You may find there's a lot of overlap in what has continued to bring you joy and utilizing this list of inspiration. You'll guide yourself into making the kind of work that you want to make versus the kind of work that you think you should be making. It's very easy to fall into the audience pleaser trap and create things in order to garnish likes and follows. And believe me, I've been there. It's an incredibly hard habit to break. And it's not, it's fun sometimes to play to the trends, but if it, if it doesn't align with the work that you like to do, then why waste the time doing them? Because in the end, like, will it make you happy? If social media didn't exist, would you still make it? I mean, would that make your inner child happy? Probably not. When you create things that spark joy within yourself, you're going to draw the sort of audience that also enjoys that and you won't feel trapped in a place where you don't want to be. When we were kids, we made art because we liked it. We didn't do it for the approval, for the applause. We instead did it because it was something that we used to express ourselves. And this is the sort of freedom you should be bringing into your work. I tend to think visually versus making lists. My sketchbooks are full of a mix of sketches and random word lists and ideas I have. And I will also email myself the lists. And if I'm driving, I make Siri write it down in my notes. Um, sometimes it's a mix of both sketches and words. If I can't quite get across what I'm hoping to remember, um, so there's a lot of mess in my sketchbook and that's okay because I'm the only one looking at it. So you're welcome to do picture lists as well if that's how your brain works. Um, but for this exercise, I've written out a list here of all the things that made me happy as a kid that still make me happy today. And like I said before, this isn't a comprehensive list because there's a lot more. Um, and I could and I can branch each of these into a multitude of additional happy things. But for the sake of this demo, this is going to work. So from here, we're going to circle a few things from our lists and use those as the jumping off point to create. 
Now, right off the bat, I know true crime, true crime podcasts um, maybe weren't a thing when I was a kid, but I grew up watching Dateline in 2020. So I think it counts. It's, you know, child, you know, childhood versus adulthood. Um, I'm going to focus on cemeteries, which might be weird, but I find them very peaceful. And we had one in our neighborhood growing up and I loved to explore it with my mom, which this probably also fueled my love of history because I loved looking at the headstones and looking to find families and people that had passed in the 1800s. It was fun to see in a cemetery, like just how far back it went. And, um, and I also love listening to podcasts about hauntings. And I love those books about ghost stories and haunted places as a kid. I had a lot of those like haunted Chicago and haunted Daytona. <laughs> they were just, I, I'd read them before bed, scare myself and then go to sleep. Um, I also really I chose to to highlight, you know, the changing seasons and magic because I grew up with the generation of Harry Potter, um, Autumn, and ghosts. So I tend to work with bright colors in most of my compositions, but I also lean to spooky things, especially given that we're near Halloween. I love creating things inspired by Halloween, and I don't know why, but that comes really easy for me in terms of creating, and I've learned to lean into it. I loved Halloween growing up and I still do. It, it just makes me happy. It's the signals of, you know, it signals the changing of the season and the beginning of the holiday season, which is my favorite time of the year. I've always loved this time of year because we'd have four holidays in a row. We'd have Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. And then my birthday fell among that as well. So it's it's always been just a very happy spread of months for me. So now we're going to move into Adobe Fresco. And since we don't have a lot of time, I prepared a time-lapse video showing my process from start to finish. So this piece in total took about four hours in Adobe Fresco, and I brought the process down to around 10 minutes. Um, I used my own brushes for this, but the great thing with Fresco is it comes programmed with Kyle Webster's brushes, so you can jump into the work right away. And if you want to create something with similar feeling, you can use Kyle's dry media brushes as well as his charcoal brushes to achieve a similar effect. So I started out by creating a new document and I'm going to work in an eight by 10 inch at 300 DPI. You're welcome to work in another format, but this is my preferred method. Often when I'm creating something for a client, I will work at 350 DPI depending on the project just so I can scale things up a bit if need be, but for print work, 300 DPI is plenty. And I'm occasionally gonna glance over at this so I can see where it's at. Um, so I began by grabbing pink from my color palette because I love to sketch in color. It just makes it a lot more fun for me and I like to layer color from light to dark. So I'll start with a really light pink and then refine it in a darker pink and then a darker pink, then dark pink, then like blue or something. Um, and I started sketching out a few ideas for compositions. I really liked all three composition ideas and sometimes I will do more than that, or I may only do one if I have a very specific idea in mind. But ultimately for this, I went with the second composition, which featured three ghosts, two trees and a mausoleum. But I'm not using dark colors for this. I'm thinking about it as if it were an illustration for a kid's book. And I want those colors to look bright, especially with autumn. And I want to feature those gorgeous colors that appear as the season progresses. I'm also thinking back to the types of books I loved as a kid and those featured those same bright colors. So refining the sketch, I used a navy blue and you can see the personality come through. And I want you to think about this part as if you were a five-year-old drawing. We don't want it to look perfect and we want to embrace that inconsistency and not focus on making something a replica of what we see in front of us. If you're going to do a still life, make it weird and adjust it, you know, make it a, a very skewed looking still life or what have you. Make the building weird, twist the trees, pull them from your imagination. It's best when doing this to limit your reference so you're not tempted to pull from reality. Rather, we're pulling from our imagination. And as you're drawing, skew things around, adjust perspective and sizing, play with the placement and really push yourself to get uncomfortable. When we, drew, when we were kids, we drew for the sake of drawing and embrace that. 
You know, when you're a kid, you thought about, you never thought about like this cat and this building aren't the same size. You drew them the same size. So really, really play with that sort of differentiation in your shapes and your sizes because it can make for really interesting pieces. So once my sketch was finished, I focused on choosing color and I wanted to play into the autumn tones. So I used warm, bright colors without them being too bright. I'm a big fan of these orange and pink combinations as they feel very autumnal without screaming autumn, at least to me. And I also want all the colors to match in tone so that nothing gets too desaturated while drawing. So I'm not using pure white, but rather sticking to a very light gray. And it's maybe about 5 to 10% gray, which will help with that consistency throughout the illustration. And if I were to use, you know, a bright white, it would end up looking too harsh next to the colors and would draw attention away. And using like this orange and this pink, I really do love that that combination. And I've been coming across photos lately of these beautiful orange fall scenes. And I just really wanted to pull that orange in because I, it just makes me feel very happy. And I think that is an important thing to take into consideration when you're making things. So while I'm blocking in my shapes, you're going to see I've turned the sketch layer off and on a few times. And Fresco was great because it forces me to not focus on perfection. And for this piece, I actually ended up getting looser with my drawing than I generally do when working in Photoshop. And I've also challenged myself not to zoom in more than 100%. Though for a few areas, I did need to do that just for the sake of a few small details so they didn't get too muddy. Um, but otherwise, I kept myself at a maximum of 100% zoom so that perfection wasn't achieved and I didn't focus too much on like refining an area and everything felt like it was it stayed consistent. You know, we can't zoom in on a piece of paper, so work not to zoom in fresco too much to start. Though you know, raise your hand. How many of you have tried to pinch zoom your sketchbooks? Be honest. I've also tried to command Z my sketchbook. Unsurprisingly, it does not work. So for this drawing, keeping things loose and simple to start is what's going to help retain this childlike feel while still feeling like it was done by me. And the overall details that do come out are what will make the piece. Anything further back is going to be lighter in color. Anything closer will be more satur saturated. Um, I want you to have fun with your illustration. You know, again, don't focus on perfection, but instead focus on having fun, letting go and exaggerating your shapes. Don't worry about changing things as you go because you can make adjustments and you may find that once something is rendered out, it just doesn't work as well or it needs to be changed. The sketch was a good map to get you started, but this is the time to play. And as I go through, I'm adding in texture and some lines with a pencil brush, and you can use any of Kyle's pencils for this, so they'll work just as well. I like to keep the highlights and such fairly close to the base color, so nothing stands out too much and draws the eye away. So if I sample a color, my main color, I'll only go like a hair up or a hair down to get a lighter and a darker, so they're pretty close, but they still stand out if I print them. And I'm going to, I'm using all of this to give the piece some depth without making it too detailed. Um, the brickwork is kept two simple colors with a few lines here and there to structure it, but otherwise it's kept very loose. Um, if you look closely, I didn't draw the bricks as rectangles. There's just blobs that happen to look rectangular. I took my brush, my pencil, I just went back and forth, back and forth and made a rectangular shape. And, uh, you know, as I go, I'm continually asking myself as I progress through this piece, if five-year-old me would like it. And since you can see, I kept going, the answer was clearly yes. If there was something that didn't feel right, I would redraw it or find another solution. Um, like I redrew the trees a few times and then used a mask to create the shape of the trees. And I just essentially masked out the um, uneven edges so that they all felt like they had a little more structure. And then I added in the blobs of color to give them what looked like, you know, bunches of leaves without getting super detailed with that. What I did is just enough to give it, give it some structure and show the idea of leaves. So, you know, working in through the last few details and adding in some of the final textures, adding in the skeletons and things, the clouds, um, I'm really happy with how this came out and I, I wish I could have done it in real time, but I didn't have four hours. So I hope this at least gives you an idea of how I work and how I bring in a childlike sense of wonder and what I do. Um, there should also be 
a downloadable PDF so that you can rewatch it in your own time. Um, if you choose to, I put a link in the PDF. So you just have to click it and you can watch it. And it's going to be one that's about 15 minutes. So it's a little slower and you can just scrub through and watch different parts of the, of the video. If you, if you choose to, you know, go through and watch it. So as I went through this, I was just adding in the little ghosts, giving them some emotion, giving them some structure. And then I added in the skeletons at the very last um, because the focus for me was the entire top half. The skeletons are sort of just an added element that really have nothing other than to sort of ground the piece. And I, you know, I look back at like the things I, I read and, and such as a kid and I loved the Goosebumps books. I scared myself more than once with different books. There was a book I read years ago that I wish I could remember what it was called, but it was about someone found, I think, a skeleton in their, in their wall. And then I spent months scared that there was a skeleton under my bed. It's like the things that I remember as a kid that I think are really funny now that I really still enjoyed as a kid, even if they scared me. It's fun to see how they come out in my work later on and how they've influenced what I do. And with these skeletons, I'm keeping them very loose. I don't want them to look like perfect skeletons. I'm making them very stylized. And I think that's important when you're creating is to really play to the stylization of your work. And then the very last I added in little, little walking stones a little bit of texture. So ultimately, the final ended up looking like this. And I'm very happy with it. I think it's really fun. It draws your eye around. There's bright colors. And it's something a little different than what I, I've done before. And what I did with Fresco is because I didn't zoom in really more than 100%, I really focused on getting very stylized with my work. And I think this is the most stylized I think I've ever gotten. And I'm really proud of it. And I'm excited to push further and play more. So in the end, you know, with that said, I hope you come away from this feeling inspired to create something that your inner five-year-old would be really proud of. Um, I want to recap, like, Basically, brainstorm all the things that brought you joy and still bring you joy. You're going to find have you have overlap, and that's a good thing. If they brought you joy then and they brought you joy now, you're on the right track. If they brought you joy then and you think about them now and you realize, hey, I still like that, that's great. You may find things, you may find that you go back to things that you didn't that you forgot about. You may find you in you abandoned things way back when, and you want to try them again, video games or what have you. Or if you think about something you liked as a kid and you're like, eh, I'm indifferent about it now, then that's fine too. Don't write it down. But think about the things that you really like and make those lists. And then don't be afraid to take that list and really expand on that list and kind of, you know, branch off and see what common themes come from it. And if there's anything that you can just pull together, if you're having trouble coming up with a, with an illustration, do this and then just pick random things, circle random things, and then start thinking about how you can brainstorm that into a final piece and ask yourself, would this make five-year-old me happy? Would making this make me happy? Would this make my 13 year old self think I'm a super cool adult for doing what I get to do and then start creating and make sure, you know, that you work to incorporate some of those elements. You don't have to incorporate them all. Just do a few. And please, 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 please share it with me on social media. I would love to see it. I would absolutely love to see it. I'm at Shauna Parmesan on Twitter. So, and, and Instagram. So feel free to share it with me on those, on those platforms. I'd love to see what you create. So I really appreciate you all coming and taking the time to hang out with me. I had a blast and I hope you did too. Thank you. Bye.